Hi guys, it's Laura. Thank you so much for watching and welcome back to my channel. In my last video, that was the video in which I have talked about how I switched to cruelty free and vegan products. I asked you guys if you would want me to film videos about what products I'm currently using on a daily basis and you guys were interested, so here I am. I am going to start with my hair stuff and I will definitely divide this into more videos because otherwise it will be way too long. So today we're going to talk about hair. I will also film a video about my current makeup that I'm using on a daily basis and I will also film a skincare and body care video. So if you want to know what hair products I'm using currently, then please keep watching. I thought the best way how to kind of structure this video would be to show you first the products that I'm using for washing my hair, for conditioning and for styling. Then I will show you the products that I'm using for dyeing my hair and at the end I will show you some products that I'm just using up and I do not plan on buying again. However, I think some of these products might be still interesting for you and that's why I have decided to include them in today's video as well. Another thing, I have no idea how long this video is going to be, so you might want to grab something to drink. I have here, as usual, my big glass with water and crystals and steel straw, and now let's get into this. When I wash my hair, I always like shampooing it twice. The first round is always to clean my hair and to get rid of any styling products that I've been using, and the second round is to tone it with a silver shampoo. So the first product I'm always using is Scenic, which is this shampoo bar from Lush. I love these solid shampoos, super practical when you travel, no packaging and this one smells so wonderful. It literally smells for me like a day on a beach. It's so fresh. It has a bit of sea salt in it. It will give your hair body. So if you have rather fine hair, you would definitely benefit from this shampoo. I don't necessarily need it because I have naturally really thick hair and my hair feels almost like bristles, especially here on the bottom. But I like what it does to my hair. It gets it super clean, my scalp gets squeaky clean without being dried out and it doesn't dry my hair out even though I'm bleaching it, so it's definitely something I would recommend. The second product that I'm always using is a silver shampoo and I'm currently using this silver shampoo from Lee Stafford. It's called Bleach Blondes. This is a highly pigmented product, so you might want to use it like every other time or every third time in order to avoid any buildup. It has silicone in it, so it's maybe not the best solution right now, but I really like the shade because it's a purple that has also pink in it, and that's what I like on my hair personally. Least Effort is a cruelty-free brand. They have a clear statement about their animal testing policy on their webpage. They also do not sell in China. However, they do not list exactly which products are vegan. I found a blogger. Shout out to Alien on Toast. She also has a YouTube channel, so I will link both down below. She contacted them and she got a little bit more detailed statement about their animal testing policy or like non-animal testing policy, I should say. And she has a list of vegan friendly products and that should help you if you're looking for some shampoos or maybe styling products. And this one is also vegan friendly. So that would be the silver shampoo I'm using currently. I also have at home the silver shampoo from Bleach London, highly pigmented, a wonderful product. For my taste, a little bit too much of a blue in it, but that's of course, you know, uh, very personal because uh, some people might like the blue based shampoo better than the shampoo that has a little bit more pink in it. I know that they also have a pink shampoo. I already ordered it and I will try to mix the silver shampoo from Bleach London with the pink shampoo and I will try to achieve a shade that would look somewhat similar to this one because this one has silicone in it and this one has no silicone in it. But that's also a recommendation if you're looking for a silver shampoo and you want one that's blue based and that has no silicone in it. Bleach London is also cruelty free and this product is also vegan. After I've washed my hair and toned it with the silver shampoo, I always use either a regular conditioner or a deep conditioning treatment. These are my current favorites. So I have here the conditioner with almond oil and vanilla by the brand Balea. This is a drugstore brand, no silicones in it, no parabens. It's a really great brand. I mean, it's not organic cosmetic, but as far as drugstore cosmetic goes, it has pretty good ingredients. And I just like it because it conditions my hair very well. The hair is super soft afterwards and the scent is very subtle. They also have a deep conditioning treatment. So whenever, whenever I just bleached my hair or whenever I feel like my hair is a little dry, 
I like using this one. This one is supposed to be left in for like three minutes and this one only shortly. I usually leave this one in like for 10 minutes. Sometimes I put even plastic back on my hat and sit and edit my videos or do whatever I want to do and leave it in even longer. And I just like these and they are so inexpensive. This one is like, I think 80 cents. It's not even a euro. I don't remember how much was this one, but it's also something around like two euros or something like that. Great products, highly recommend them. So that's the conditioning. I have here two products that I'm using only occasionally, but I feel like they are a really great help. First of all, Olaplex number three. That's a product that definitely helps my hair to stay in shape, even though I'm bleaching it. And I really like it. I use it about like two, maybe three times a month. And I just use this up so I have to buy it again. Definitely something I recommend if you're dyeing your hair. And then I have here this treatment. This is a spray conditioning treatment that can be used on towel dried hair. It has an oily component and a liquidy component. So you need to shake it. And then after you towel dried your hair, you would spray it on and leave it in. So this is something I like. It's by the brand Alverde. It's the organic cosmetics from our drugstore. And I like it. The next step always depends on the current state of my hair. So if I'm about to get a trim and my hair is pretty dry at the ends, I like using R&B, which is this conditioning cream from Lush. It smells so wonderful, like oranges and jasmine. And I always need only the tiniest amount and massage it to the ends of my hair. I would say like only on the last inch, inch and a half, and that's enough. And you really need to use very little of it. Otherwise the ends would be too greasy. And I let it set for like one or two minutes. And then I'm using styling foam. I like the brand Balea again because it's inexpensive. And this one kind of glues the hair together when it's wet. And then I always crunch it so that I get more defined wave. And I let it dry. But after the hair dries, you can brush it through very easily. And that's why I love this product so much because it doesn't stay sticky, if you know what I mean. And it's also super inexpensive. So when my hair is currently trimmed and the ends look healthy, I don't necessarily always use the R&B. It just depends on how it feels. But um, whenever I feel like I need a trim, which is right now the case, then I use this first and then the styling foam, otherwise just the styling foam. And then I always let my hair only air dry because I don't like using heat. I'm bleaching my hair. I do sometimes use a hair curler or a straightener, but that's like a couple of times a year, maybe like five times in total. And that's pretty much it. I try not to use any heat on my hair because I'm growing it out and I want to keep my hair healthy and shiny. Now the styling products. I've been using Balea hairsprays for years and I still love them. They cost like 80 cents or something like that. Super inexpensive, but I just love them because they do what I want them to do. I can brush them easily out. And that's basically everything I'm looking for in a hairspray. Also, the scent doesn't irritate me and they are all cruelty free and vegan. So this is my favorite. It's the volume effect hairspray. It doesn't make your hair sticky. You don't feel like there is too much of a product in your hair. And that's perfect for me. I usually spray only here on the side when I'm wearing my moon clip or when I'm wearing my hair half up or when I'm wearing some kind of an updo or I don't know, a ponytail or a bun, then I use a little bit of this hairspray so that I don't have any flyaways. And I always use just a little bit here on the top, but that's pretty much it. And I have this one always for at least a month, sometimes even longer until it gets used up. So this is something I can also recommend I know it's available only in Europe. So if you're from the States, I'm sorry, this is probably not much of a help, but I believe that Paul Mitchell's hairsprays are vegan. As far as I know, I know they are cruelty free and they might be vegan. So the next thing I have here is a dry shampoo from Batiste. Uh, my favorite scent is cherry. I also like the Batiste original and Batiste fresh. And I always use this already on the third day because I like using the dry shampoo before my hair even starts getting greasy because I feel like that helps it to not get greasy at all or not so soon. 
I'm washing my hair every fifth day. Sometimes I can go six days without washing my hair. And this little fella definitely helps. So highly recommend it. And then I have here a leave-in conditioner from Ultracrum. Ultracrum is a Danish brand. It's an organic cosmetics brand and uh, they are cruelty-free and vegan. This one is from their new product line. It's the Northern Berries. So I'm probably going to say it wrong. There is Sundorn. I don't know if it's an English word. There is um, cranberries in it and also blueberries and vitamins and antioxidants. This is something you could use as a spray leave-in conditioner. I personally like using it as a styling spray. So I use it the way you would use a salt spray. I tried salt sprays in the past, but I don't like the feel of my hair after that because they always make my hair so dry and kind of sticky. And this one is so wonderful. It has a very subtle berry scent that you barely smell and it goes away very quickly. So if you're wearing a perfume, it doesn't kind of correlate with it. And the way I'm using it, it's very simple. I always air dry my hair and in the morning I brush it through and I just go like this. I shake it a little bit and I spray just a little bit on my hair and then I crunch it and you can see it gives my hair again a little body and the wave is a little bit more structured. And that's basically what I'm using it for. A little bit goes a long way. I don't remember what it costs, but it's not something special. It's like, it's not super expensive. So definitely affordable. So these are my styling products. Now let's talk about how I dye my hair. Right now I'm only bleaching my roots and toning my hair with a silver shampoo. And that's pretty much it. So it's super easy. The bleach I'm currently using is the white fire bleach from Directions. So this is the jar with the bleaching powder. It's a very pale blue bleaching powder. It is 60 gram inside. I am going to open it for you so that you can see how the color looks like. Super pale blue. I think I'm gonna turn the light off because I feel like this is too bright. And then I have here the developer. So they have two developers. One is 10 volume, which is 3%. And the second one, the one that I'm using is 20 volume. That would be 6%. And I don't personally need anything stronger than that. It is not so harsh on my hair. However, I have to leave this bleach on for a while, but I filmed the entire process yesterday for you when I was touching up my roots. So more about that in that video. Otherwise this video is going to be endless. And up till now, I've been also toning my hair purple with different semi-permanent hair dyes. I'm not going to do that again in a near future, maybe sometimes in the future, but right now I'm not feeling it. I wanted to go back to blonde because that's a color I love. And I finally achieved white blonde on my head without having any damage. And I'm so happy about that because this is the color I always wanted. So I don't think I'm going to go purple again. But these are the brands I've been using. All of them are cruelty free and vegan. I've been mixing Manic Panic, Purple Haze and Ultraviolet. I have a video about that. I will link it down below. Then I have also tried Bleach London's Violet Skies. I was no, not really jazzed about this color because it washes out very quickly. However, it smells wonderful and it might depend on the state of my hair. Maybe if my hair was in a, in a different state, maybe it would last longer. I don't know. I still have a one full bottle and like a half of one bottle. So I don't know what to do with that. And then I have here um, Directions, Carnations and Violet. I mixed these two, like a really tiny amount of these two. The last time I toned my hair purple with a lot of conditioner. And that's what I was using. So these are some options. And yeah, as I said, all of these brands are cruelty free and vegan. So if you're looking for some pastel hair dyes, that would be definitely a recommendation. I think there's also Lime Crime and Crazy Colors and Ar Arctic Fox. They are also cruelty free and vegan. And last but not least, I have here a couple of products that I do not plan on buying again. The first one is the Shampoo 3 from Paul Mitchell. I think it's a wonderful clarifying shampoo. It is supposed to help to get rid of the greenish hue when you go swimming and you get the unwanted hue in your hair. I use this in order to 
wash out the semi-permanent hair dye a little bit faster. So I've been washing my hair a little bit faster and I've been always using this shampoo. But it has a silicone in it, which I don't particularly like in my products. And I feel like if I would have used just this one, the Scenic, it would have done pretty much the same. Because anytime I use this one on the semi-permanent hair dye, it has sea salt in it, so it would help uh, to get them out a little bit faster. And I like the fact there is no silicone in it and no packaging. So whenever I would want to get rid of some hue, I would probably use shampoo and vitamin C powder or just this shampoo. And I would not necessarily buy Paul Mitchell's Shampoo 3. However, I feel like it's still a nice shampoo, but I don't plan on buying it again. Then I have here two oils. I stop using them and I do use them now before I wash my hair. I kind of grease my hair with it and then I wash my hair because I feel like coconut oil does the trick too or a simple argan oil and also I prefer for my ends the R&B cream because for whatever reason I'm apparently incapable of using hair oils without having my hair too greasy and with this one I'm a little bit more skilled. So I'm not gonna buy these again. The first one is by the brand Be Good. It's an apricot seeds oil. It smells wonderful. It smells like apricot jelly, but it's so strong that I haven't found a healthy ratio yet that would not make my hair greasy. I'm just incapable of using this one. And the second one is by the brand Inecto. Uh, Inecto is cruelty free and it also says directly here that it's also vegan friendly. Um, as far as I understood the whole brand is vegan friendly but it's an oil that has silicone in it and I feel like it's bad enough that my purple shampoo has silicone in it. Why adding more uh, with the hair oil? I am already looking for an alternative to this one that would have a very similar shade. So yeah, that's something I won't buy again. And then I have here a conditioner that I don't plan on buying again by the brand Balea. So I have shown you the regular conditioner that I'm using that I love. This was a new product line. It's called Beauty Secrets. It's wonderful. It smells great, but I don't feel like it would be better than this one. It costs a little bit more. There's less of the product in it and I just prefer this one. So these are the products I do not plan on buying again. However, I'm just going to use them up because I don't want to waste them. Congratulations if you made it so far because I have a feeling that this video is endless. And yeah, that's all about the products that I'm using or using up when it comes to hair. I will film, as I said at the beginning, a video about the makeup that I'm using on a regular basis. And I will also film a video about my skincare. So stay tuned. Um, if you like today's video, don't forget to give the video a thumb up because that really helps the channel. You can also subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet. I will link several playlists and videos down below that might be useful to you. And you will also find down below all of my Instagram accounts, links to my other channels, a few discount codes, affiliate links, and the music that plays at the end. And if I think of something, I'm also gonna link it down below. So that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. I love you guys so much and I'm looking forward to seeing you soon with my next video. Bye. Mm -hmm.